Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode we'll be discussing about operators. Specifically, we'll be discussing about two types, uh, logical operators and relational operators. But first we'll discuss about logical operators. So if we come over here to the Explorer, uh, let's actually disable our if statement script, and we'll just do the same old same old with uh, going to workspace, creating a script, renaming the script. We'll call this one operators. That's what we're going to call it, and we'll delete this line. Okay. So in the past, um, when I discussed about if statements, uh, when I made if statements, the way how it worked is that we would have the if keyword, and then we would have some sort of statement, whether it would be deemed as true or false. And if it was true, then it would be a valid statement, and then it would execute whatever line of codes inside of that if statement. So let's say one equals one, which is true. So we'd say then, and then it would run whatever is inside of here. But there should be more ways of controlling uh, this conditional. There's no way you could just compare one thing and then uh, just run the line of code. There isn't enough control over our comparisons. And in our previous episode, I showed you about like this little squiggly line thing that means not, and there was like some other things that might've confused you about it. And you might've wondered, there must have been more types of comparisons. And you are right, there are more types of comparisons. So that's why I'll be discussing about them in this video. So. Logical operators, essentially, there's three types of logical operators. There's and, there's or, and there's not. And what all of these, and what all these mean is that these are keywords that we can add into our conditional statement to further add on to the, to further add on to the complexity of our conditionals of what we're comparing to. Instead of having just one comparison here, we can have multiple comparisons here, or we can have more comparisons, but only check if one of them's true. Or we could just do the reverse and check if something is not equal to whatever we want to compare this said thing to. So first we'll start with and. So let's, so let's delete this again, and we'll start with our if statement of the keyword if. Let's do one example of, let's say if, one equals one, which we know that's true. So it's just going to print what is whatever's over here. But what if we want to check for more than one item so that if this is true, we want to check if something else along that is also true. And if both of them are true, then we will execute this line. So this is where the and keyword comes in. So we're going to just hit space and then we're going to type in and and we're going to hit space again. And now let's say we want to do make the statement two equals four. So what's interesting about this line is that we made one comparison here and then we have an and keyword here in conjunction with this second keyword or this second statement with two equals four. So we know that one does equal to one, but two does not equal to four. So this is true, but this is false. And the reason this statement is not valid is because both of these need to be true, but if only one of them is true and the other one is false, then it's not going to work. It's just not going to make this entire statement valid just because this one was not true. So that's the power of and statements. And let's say we wanted to just have one of them true and we don't want the other one false. Then all we have to do is just replace and with the keyword or. And so what base and so what this means is that if one equals one, which is true, then we don't even have to look at this other statement over here, two equals four, because it's only if either one or the other statement is true. It doesn't even matter if if both of them are true, because what matters is if one of them is equal to true, then this statement's gonna be valid. So it's just going to print uh, just something. Uh, this statement will print. We'll just like say something here. So. With an or statement, only one of these needs to be true. It doesn't matter if uh, one of them's false, as long as one of them's true. But if we recap, and is only if both of these statements are true. But with or, it's only if one of these statements is true, then this will run. Now you might be asking, uh, can I compare more than two statements? And the answer to that is, yes, you can actually compare as many statements as you want uh, inside of your if statement. So if we replace this back with and uh, two equals equal to four, we can say uh, if and, or no, we can also say and one equal to two and six equal to five and 10 equal to 12. And 
so on and so forth. You can do the same thing. You can mix and match with or here. Uh, you can also mix up with and. You do have to be careful about mixing up conditions because sometimes it gets confusing when you're trying to figure out if these two match, but then if these two match with this one. And it, it just gets kind of confusing if you have a lot of statements all at the same time. So you don't have to really worry about that that much, at least like, at least like this early on. Okay, so let's delete this conditional here. What if now I wanted to check if a statement is not what I display it as? If I want to check if something is not true, then what I'm going to do is, let's say for 1 equal to 2. In, in my previous episode, I told you to change these double equal signs to a squiggly line, but this is really a relational operator, which I will talk about later. The relational operator is a completely different thing from a logical operator, but they act as the same thing. So what I mean is, uh, we're going to start with the not operator here. If we place a not here, and the weird thing about this is Roblox is giving us an error that uh, it's not valid if we just have a not on the left side and then like not have one on the right side. So we have to create uh, parentheses here to give specification that we want to specifically say not one equal to two, which will make the statement uh, print. But I don't usually use the not a logical keyword. I just use the squiggly equal sign that that comes from the relational operators uh, than the logical ones. So it's I, I don't really use this very often. But if you want to use it, then that's totally up to you. It's uh, totally fine. Um, but that's the that's pretty much the basics of logical operators. You have and or and not. These three are very effective when it comes to your conditional statements because you have more power over them. And now I'm going to be talking about relational operators. Okay, so relational operators, there are six types of relational operators, and I'm going to go through each one of them. So as you know, the first one is the equals equals. I already told you about this multiple times in previous episodes, where if, if the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right, then it's going to uh, make this a valid statement. Now, now I told you... Now, another one that I taught you is the opposite of it, which is the not equals. And the way you type that is if I say, um, if I replace the first equal sign with the squiggly line that's located on the top left of your keyboard, I believe, uh, at least for mine it is. So you have the squiggly line and then equals. This indicates that whatever's on the left side does not equal to the thing on the right side. And if that's true, then it'll print whatever statement is here. So it's basically just the equal sign, but it's reversed. So it's like we're trying to look for if this is not equal to the, the thing on the right. Okay, so there's four more to go, but I'll talk about two more and then talk about the, the other two. So when you're comparing numbers, uh, I think you know what greater than or less than means. Um, so this is what it looks like. We have greater than, which is indicated by a right arrow sign right here. Uh, this is basically to check if whatever's on the left side is a greater value than the one that's on the right side. And if that's true, then it'll be a, a, a true statement and it'll run whatever's down here. And then we can do the reverse, which is which is just the less than symbol, which is like this left arrow symbol right here, to check if whatever value is on the left side is less than the value that's on the right side, then that's also a true statement. Okay, so that's that's pretty much good and all. But now there's two final ones to look for. There's the greater than or equal to and the less than or equal to. So, so uh, for reference, this is what the greater than symbol looks like. But what if we want to check if the value on the left side is greater than or equal to? So let's say, uh, le let's replace one with two. And obviously, two is not greater than two. But if we say two is greater than or equal to two, then this is a true statement. So this is like including whatever number is being compared to here on top of it being greater than the number that's on the right. So this is a true statement. Two is greater than or equal to two, but this is not a true statement. Two is not greater than two. So, and, and you have to be very careful about writing this statement because you have to remember that the arrow is on the left side and the equal is on the right side. Because uh, a lot of people get this mixed up where they have the equal sign first and then uh, the, the arrow, so it looks like an arrow with dashes on it, but that's not the right way to do it. You have to say the arrow first and then the equal sign. And so the same thing happens with uh, the less than or equal to. So it, it looks like this. You have uh, the arrow first, and then you have the lines, the, the dash lines. So that's how relational operators work. And those are the, the six ones that you should really know about. 
Okay, so that's going to be it for operators. Um, for today's learning objective, I want you to mess around with uh, logical and relational operators. So you can have relational operators, and if it really helps you, you can add parentheses to make it more readable and to make sure that no errors uh, come into play when you're comparing stuff. So we can say if 2 is less than or equal to 2, uh, and uh, let's say 1 is greater than... Uh, negative one and uh I, I i forgot to mention that uh when you have a dash like this like a subtract symbol behind a number that indicates that the number is negative and that's also an important one to know about just in case for the future so one is greater than negative one which is true so then we can also say or uh something else here 10 is greater than uh two Let's say that. So you could just keep up. So you could just keep continuing this uh, conditional statement here. And what you could also do is down here, you could you could uh, have an if statement inside of the if statement. So we can say if all of this is true, then we can check down here again if this stuff is true as well. We could say like ten is greater than ten, and you know so on and so forth. It's just gonna it's just gonna keep it's just gonna like keep comparing stuff the further you go down. And uh, that's pretty much the main takeaway from this. Um, I hope you found this episode helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.